County Skeptics. Uh, she's the steering member of the Independent Investigation Group. Um, just a few months ago, she was a recipient of the 2013 James Randi Award for Skepticism in the Public Interest, and she is a self-proclaimed skeptical junkie, um, sometimes affectionately called the Wikipediatrician. Susan is also the founder of both Guerrilla Skepticism on Wikipedia and Skeptic Action Projects. And in tonight's talk, Beyond the Skeptic Choir, Crowdsourced Activism for the Rest of Us, she'll show you how you can make a real difference and help keep pseudoscience at bay. So please give a warm welcome, Susan Gerber. <laughs> Tonight. Thank you for all of you guys coming. Richard Dawkins was supposed to be here. Oh, I should turn <laughs> Richard Dawkins is going to come hang out with us, but you know how that works. Hey, Jay, here's a camera. Can you point it in my direction once in a while? And add other people too? And like push the buttons. All right. Golly, now. You can hear me good now. Okay. So how this is going to work is I'm going to talk a little bit, and I'm totally expecting to get some questions from you guys. In fact, I really want a lot of questions, because I already know all this, and my whole intention is to get you guys excited about doing some kind of skeptical action. I'm going to show you what I'm doing, and then I'm going to do a, um, you know, my little thing, and um, I'm not really sure how long that's going to take two, three, four hours at least. And then um, we're going to stop, and then we'll start the second half. But what we'll do is, no, I'm going to do um, questions. And what I want to do is I'm going to take the questions, I'm going to use my big camera, and I want to have um, the questions asked of me, and I'm going to probably just change my hat to because <laughs> I have a lot of hats. So um, what I'm going to be doing is using these questions, if they're the kind of questions that I can use that are, you know, I'm sure there are going to be great questions, and I'm going to use this for instructional uh, videos for my um, my team because I am training a team of people how to edit. And I'm sure the questions you're going to have are going to be questions that are going to be really, really in, from, you know, informative to our to my team. So one of the things is, and thank you, Greg, for that. Thank you, Greg. Um, it's just really neat because, you know, my Wikipedia ed editors, you almost don't have names anymore. You're known for the things you've done for us. And it's true, once you start doing pages after pages after pages, and you start reading and uh, writing them, you get to know that person. You feel like you bonded with the person in a way that maybe like a hairdresser would be bonding, you know, so they're telling you the private stuff, they're sitting in your chair and you're doing their hair every week. It's a really interesting feeling about how you know the person in really intimate ways that probably aren't common. And um, Greg has, um, is known for right now for putting up a Wikipedia picture of um, Penn and Teller. And then we turn that Penn and Teller photo and it is worldwide. It's on every, every Penn and Teller page, his photo, all over. And then Chris over here, hey Chris! She, uh, she's our um, Mary Roach person. She came in, she had no skill editing Wikipedia whatsoever. She came in and she says, I want to do Mary Roach because I met her at a, at a lecture. And he said, yeah, I want to, I want to, she seemed really nice. So she just spent the entire summer working on this Wikipedia page for Mary Roach. Got it in beautiful shape. We made it a did you know, which is something that's a little complicated that I'm not going to explain right now. And then um, meeting laughter, Mary Roach is calling her, they're going to dinner. She can hang out with her, bought her lobster. I told her that's fine as long as it's after the page has already been. Because uh, we, we can't have that conflict of interest thing. So somewhere on here. No, that's not it. This is the one I did at Tam. So ignore this one. Um, I will be at the CFI Summit. And they're putting me on a panel. Where is it? VA, is it that one? Yeah. Okay, so, and there's somewhere I could hit, and it will give me a slideshow. That's a gallery. Um, people still start yelling out in the top. Okay, so 
Um, I put this slide up here only for one reason. It's because I want to show you that I did used to wear hats even before I had no hair. So um, I was wearing sillier and sillier hats at the time. And, and um, I wore this for a lecture I did for the James Randi Foundation, their first workshop. And YouTube comments, you, I've got about 4,000 views, which isn't a lot. But the YouTube commenters are mixed bag. It's people saying, you know, how great, this is an interesting project. I want to join your team. And the rest are, what's up with that hat? It's, how is that holding onto your head? That doesn't make any sense. It's so distracting. I can't look at you. Your hat is just all crooked and everything. I don't have an idea what you said. So anyway, so I decided that I will just go ahead and continue with the stupid hats. Because, you know, what the hell. So. If I push a button, not that one, how about that one? There you go. Okay, so this is me with hair. And you can't tell right here, but right here is James Randi. He's sitting right there. We cut him out of the picture. Isn't that great? That was a Dragon Con. Um, not this last Labor Day, but the year before. Seriously, uh, Randy's sitting next to me, but you know, you all know what he looks like. So, this speech I'm going to be giving to you today is called Activism Beyond the Crap beyond the choir because the whole idea is to get beyond the choir. We're trying to um, educate people who are not necessarily uh, believers. I'm not a proponent of uh, arguing with people who are on the internet and trying to make get your point across and things like that because it rarely works. I mean, yeah, there's other people watching and they're probably going, God, what a dick she is. Oh, jeez, you know. I, it, it's, and the person who you're arguing with isn't reading your arguments. So, I kind of really think that we should get out and start talking to people who are your, um, that are on the fence or don't really know. So that's pretty much what my, my thing is. Okay, so I have several projects. Right now, one of them I started in May is called Skeptic Action, and this is the icon for Skeptic Action. And on Skeptic Action, it's a one a day um, thing that you can do that takes just a couple minutes. Once you're signed up, you know, you have to get a few things. Like we use Web of Trust. How many here use Web of Trust? Okay, so more than half of you guys know what Web of Trust is. That's great. And this is um, uh, something that's pretty popular. Rebutter, how many people use Rebutter? Ooh, I am really impressed. Shane's gonna love that. Anybody use Fish Barrel? One. I'm impressed. Shall so did you nod your head yes? Did you do it? No, I thought I saw you say yes. So I'm going to go over these very briefly so that you guys will all be comfortable with these. All this activism, now I do a lot of activism that has nothing to do with crowdsource activism at home. I do lots of activism that are, you know, we protest, uh, like Sylvia Brown. I'm involved in the IIG, which many people here are members of. And that's more active, in your face kind of thing. I do that too, but today I'm just going to talk about crowdsourcing. So first we're going to talk about is Web of Trust. Web of Trust is the most important um, crowdsource project that you can do. And it's very easy. You sign up, you get your username, and what will happen What will happen whenever you have Web of Trust is you're going to be able to um, rate a site. Now, they just recently changed their, um, their uh, the way they do things as far as um, it was a little more complicated. Now they've streamlined it, and it's a lot easier to do Web of Trust. And, um, Web of Trust is pretty popular. In fact, it's so popular. Anybody have a guess at how many people probably have downloaded this since it started? A million. 20,000. And for Harold's, it's 20,000. Well, it's 96 million. That's a lot. Have downloaded this uh, Web of Trust to the browsers. Now, I've done it at least three or four times because whenever your computer crashes and you have to reload it, you got to redo it again. So keep that in mind too. So this is a little ticky thing. I took it off a few days ago when I made this slide, so it's probably you know a little bit more than that. But when I did TAM uh, in July, it was at 85 million. So we're we're up there. So this is how many people you are potentially affecting that are watching Web of Trust. Now, everybody knows who Aunt B is. She's so sweet, isn't she sweet? Anyway, Aunt B is, represents, in my mind, the person we're trying to protect the internet from. Oh, or to protect her from the internet. Thank you, Rick. Not her <laughs> um, I've had neighbors and aunts and so on, but they just don't quite get it. Um, they're the type that downloads things that your computer comes up and it says you have a virus, download this, and the next thing you know, they're calling you in tears because nothing works. And, um, 
You know, they're also not really good at understanding one web page from another. They, they kind of think they're all white people, or I, I read it online, and it, and it had gov after it, you know, White House stuff. And, um, you know, they're not quite there as far as the technology goes. So I want you, when I'm talking about a lot of these things, I want you to picture your own Aunt B. It could be an uncle, it could be your neighbor, it could be a lot of different people. And I don't want to pick just on older people who are not necessarily into the technology because, you know, uh, I know a lot of um, the people who are the older people now are probably the people who gave us the technology that we're using right now. So um, also think of the young people who are not quite um, savvy on to all the scams that we already know about, like multi-level marketing scams. In fact, Chris is, gave me the, uh, this, is part of the reason why I started with um, Skeptic Action. She had come into our Facebook group for, I don't know if you even remember this, do you remember this story? You had a cousin who was going to, who had been approached by ACN, yeah. was it ACN? And ACN is a multi-level marketing company. And I'd heard of it too, and she says, and this is a couple years ago, Chris had said, well, my cousin asked me about this, and when my cousin, and so I went to her, the web page, and this big red warning thing came on, on the screen, and I thought, what the heck is this? What, what does that mean? And so she came and she asked us, and we said, oh, that's web of trust, and that means that it's an untrustworthy site. So we looked into it, and I said, what was the name of the web page again? And she told me it was ACM. And I said, oh, that's a multi-level marketing scam. And so she was able to go back to her cousin and explain that. She didn't join, right? She did. She did join? Yeah. Oh. She lost a lot of money. And she lost a lot of money, she said. Even, with, even when we warn these people, they don't always get it. They have to learn for themselves. But she's out of it at now? She is now. Is she broke? Yeah. Is she living on the street? No. Oh, OK. She got better. She got better. <laughs> but hopefully, she'll never do that again. So as I said, I don't really want to pick on just our elderly people. Or, um, I want to pick on everybody that doesn't, you know, there's things we just don't know. And sometimes, like I say, there's a lot of these younger people who just haven't lived, haven't had enough life experience yet to know that, you know, some of this stuff is not probably a good idea. You know, they think, oh, well, you know, everybody's doing it or whatever. So in your mind, find your own Aunt B, okay? Because I want you to kind of, Go with me on this one. I need your I need your help. So I could do this talk on a lot of different topics. And um, tonight, I, I in the past at Tam, I did a lot of experience with homeopathy because you guys all love homeopathy. I mean, I like a good glass of water too, but uh, <laughs> and sugar. But anyway, today I'm thinking on Brzezinski. Uh, how many people here know who Brzezinski is? Wow! Oh, it's so cool. I, Bob Blaskowitz, if you're listening to this, you've done good. Um, in, for the two or three out there who do not know who Brzezinski is, you can read his Wikipedia page. But I want to spend a little bit of time on this. This is a Google search for a Brzezinski clinic. He is a Texas uh, doctor. He does have a degree in, as a doctor. And he has invented a urine cancer cure, well, I believe the urine is no longer in it, and he takes on subjects who are usually on the most medical sciences kind of, most doctors are kind of given up on, and he'll charge you an arm or leg. I think it's $7,000 for a consultation with this man. No insurance will cover it at all. So uh, Dr. Brzezinski is under attack by skeptics. We have extremely well uh, organized uh, group of people led by Bob Blaskowitz and David Gorski, and you might have heard their lecture at TAM, and he's authorized me to say that in the next few weeks, any time now, there's going to be a, he's, Brzezinski's going to be major in the news, major in the news. I know what it is, but I can't say that, but I can tell you this is going to get really everywhere. That is if something doesn't happen major somewhere else in some other kind of, um, you know, like the government blows up or something like that, you know, or I don't know, something else that steals all this power from it. But I want to talk about this a little bit. And um, so what you're looking at is a Google search. Now these kinds of things, you guys have seen this come up, right? Where whenever you're doing Google search for something specific, it's going to give you probably, and this is a quote from Wikipedia, it's going to give you a little blurb about who that person is or, or whatever it is. 
And, and it's real important that the Wikipedia page has a really tight lead because that is going to be translated over into this little blurb that shows up on most Google, um, Google searches. So I really encourage my Wikipedia editors to make sure that the first sentence or two is got whatever criticism we have of that person in there. And this one does, it says, I'm offering unproven cancer treatment. At least it says, it says that much at least. Down here at the bottom, it has other people that, that they have been known for. And we want to start trying to get people's pictures in there, like David Gorski's photo or something like that in there. And this, we don't have a way of making this happen. It's just like searches that people come up, and this is what appears here. So we don't, we can't make it necessarily. But it's, I, I guess, the more times that Brzezinski's clicked on and David Gorski's kicked, clicked on, your his David Gorski's is gonna, uh, name is going to come up on there. So the other things I want to show you about this page is these right here, these little red things and these green things, that's Web of Trust. So if you have Web of Trust turned on, that's what's going to come on. And you can see in an instant which is a trustworthy site and which is a, a, a non-trustworthy site. So remember Aunt B, she, you're going to go to her house and you're going to install Web of Trust on her computer because you're going to tell her, Aunt B, I'm going to help you out. We're going to fix up your computer and protect you a little bit. I'm going to, so you're going to install, I would, I'd like you to install Google Chrome, Chrome because that way you can get rebutter on that. And, um, you know, she'll be fine with Google Chrome. That's easy. Whether you prefer it or not, it's a, probably the easier one to use. But you're, so that whatever you teach her um, to look for these little red or these green dots, so that whenever the red dots come up, tell her don't go to those pages. Only go to the pages that have the green dots. Another thing I want to mention on here is that uh, the Wikipedia page for Brzezinski is one of the top ones that's coming up in the search engine. And that's true just about everywhere, which is one reason why um, the Wikipedia page is, Wikipedia is so, so amazing. So I think I've talked about this enough. This is, I'm going to talk about this in a second. And the other Brzezinski patient group, 35 years is long enough. This is Bob Laskowitz's page. He's a love. He has just done this for the last few years. And oh my gosh, it is, I don't know how anybody could possibly do, write the stories. He's taking blog entries that um, when a person goes into the news, and it's very expensive to go through the Brzezinski Clinic. $35,000, $100,000, and so on. Your insurance doesn't cover this at all. And um, most of the patients will die. So not only are they dying, but your family's ripped apart with constant um, money fundraising and, and so on. And the chemotherapy and things go on for hours. Now I have a point here too because I have cancer. There's just another reason why I'm, I'm talking about uh, Brzezinski this time. And it is cancer month, right? Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So um, this guy really gets my goat, especially, and I was after him before, but when I got breast cancer, it was like, oh no, this guy's got a goat. Oh no, no, no. This is just wrong, you know? All this stuff is happening. Okay, so Bob Laskowitz sent me a note and said that Brzezinski's put up another, Wikipedia, uh, another website because his, his main website has been hit so many times by skeptics with the Web of Trust and, re and Rebutter that you know, people don't even want to go to that page anymore, so he put this one up. So Brzezinski put this up, and he sent it out to me. Now, my Skeptic Action Team has a little over 600 people on it. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and then it's on my own personal feed, and then we also send it out to other people. And like I said, once you have Weather Trust installed in your computer, it just takes you a minute or two to be able to, do, to rate one of these sites. It's real simple. So Brzezinski saves went up. And you can see, uh, within 24 hours, we had that thing taken care of. <laughs> it, was, it was like, anybody goes to that web page that has uh, Web of Trust or Rebutter, they're going to get a hit and say that this is a bad page. Now, this is what happens when you have Rebutter. And in a nutshell, this is a very new product, maybe a year old. It's only on Google Chrome. It's a friend of mine, uh, Shane Greenup, has invented this. And at the moment, it's only on Google Chrome. And when you go to a page that has been rebutted, the, this, this thing comes up for five seconds. So it's not too intrusive. But in, um, 
it'll appear up here on this rebutter screen that says seven rebuttals. So after this fades, after five seconds, then you can still go up here and click on that. So if you have rebutter, you can go up and you can click on those things, and it's going to give you pages that have been, that are the anti um, uh, Brzezinski page. Uh, it would be like the, um, the page that um, Bob Blotskowitz wrote with the, with the uh, clients on it. And I'm telling you, that client's page is well worth reading. The problem is, is it is extremely depressing. Everybody dies. And all their money is taken from before that. It is heart-wrenching because the story is told from the blogs and the feeds that the parents have been writing as their child is diagnosed and then eventually dies. So it's hard to read more than one in a row. And I totally, totally think that if you're going to read one of these stories, have a cat or a dog nearby that's sitting on your lap, or a baby or something, because it's so emotional that lots of people read these things and they're just crying. And I can only get through a few at a time, maybe two, and that's probably my limit of a day. But they're really well worth reading, especially if you read more than one. You see the pattern of how the clinic's telling these people the same stories over and over, and it's just heart-wrenching. But you really should read them. At least try to get through a few of them. So this is rebutted with uh, several different things. And one of the things that is really great to rebut these with is a Wikipedia page. Because a lot of Wikipedia pages are well written, believe it or not. Uh, and so you could, you could uh, rebut it with, the, uh, with a Wikipedia page. And so there's seven. And Greg is really good at this. Did you do a lot? Did you do this page? Did you hit this? I think he, I think he did like five or something. He did a couple of these. And these, again, once you're signed up for rebutter, it's so simple to do. I mean, you can do them in a couple minutes if you want. It's not really a lot of work once you know what you're doing. Okay, so these are what, this is what you would see if you were to open up the rebutter page for, um, if you click on it. Mm -hmm. This one? How do you know? Is that your name? Oh, that's your name? Oh, my. So you can put these on here, and I, uh, I know I did a couple too, so we went in through. This is what it would look like, and you could thumb up and thumb down these too, also to give more like weight to whatever it is that people put up. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about rebutter because on the the um, the skeptic action team page that I have on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter, there is a uh, an instructional page and. Uh, uh, Shane Greenup has put up a, a tutorial, a video, that you can actually watch and it explains the detail of how to go through this. So he made that just for our skeptic action people. So now we've got six, seven hundred people on skeptic action since May, but not everybody's doing it every day. I, you know, I have no idea how many people are actually doing some of these things, but I do know that, you know, we can get 10,000 people on there and maybe a thousand of them are doing something. You know, we're going to be taking care of them. Here's another thing that just came out in the last, oh, weeks, a few very recently. This is something that we're starting to use a lot. Anytime we go to a, a, a woo page or a paranormal page, we put it in this do not link first and it gives you another link. Because what we don't want to do is, if I have 600 people on my skeptic action page, I don't want 600 people going and directly linking to Brzezinski saves because what it'll do is it'll bring them up in the Google ratings. Got it? So what we do is we, somebody will put it through this. It's simple. It's free. You put the the URL in here, and then you'll get a different URL. You take that URL, and then that's what you send out to all your friends. So um, this is something that you guys should be doing anytime you're going to be trying to, like if you're in a blog, um, and you're writing a blog, and you, you don't want to send a lot of people. To, you want to send people to a page, but you don't want to send them to a page and have them improve their, their hits. So this is called Do, Lo Do Not Link, and maybe a, maybe a month or so long. But I'm really, I'm really impressed with how it's, uh, everybody's grasping this. Okay, this is what Auntie M is going to see whenever Auntie B, Auntie B, getting Auntie M. I was going to name my, my daughter Emerald just because I wanted to be able to have, um, call her Auntie M whenever she had children, but I only had boys. It's my granddaughter, you know, if I ever have one. Um, so this is what Auntie uh, Aunt B would see if she was to go to a page that had a, uh, a negative uh, web of trust. This is exactly what would pull up on her page. And if you imagine, put yourself in this person's mind. If you are a person who's not really savvy with the internet, and this is what Chris's um, friend came across, you'll get this and you'll go, I don't know if I want to go to this page. 
I might get a virus, I might, this doesn't look right, this is kind of scary. Now you and I, we could go right into go to the site and it's not gonna do anything. It has, it's, 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 just a, it's just a warning thing that somebody has been, um, it's just been rated negatively. So or I can go back. So they're only rating on these two things, trustworthiness and child safety. This is new. Some uh, maybe changed over two or three weeks ago. It used to have a lot more categories. Now it's just those two things. And I'm asking you to rate the site. I'm asking you to go to the site, look at the page, and, and decide how you want to rate it. If you don't know how to rate it, and um, you say, I don't know how, how I feel about chest, uh, children safety, well then don't rate that. But you kind of see, like if we're sending you to a homeopathic page, or anti-vax page, or something like that, probably child safety is something that you don't want to have children necessarily. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of uncomfortable with a child having homeopathy or not getting vaccinated. So this is what the page would look like. Let me see if I have another slide that I can show you. And this is Fish Barrel. This is uh, brand new again. Um, it's written by somebody in Britain. And he's a little disappointed with us Americans because we're not really using it. And he tried to get us to use it. And um, he was very much in it. So Fish Barrel is a site that you can sign up for. It takes a little bit of time to get yourself all organized um, to get it in there. But once you have this added in as a plugin, what you can do is you can go, if this website is making medical claims, then what you do is you highlight the areas that are making medical claims and you click on things and it, it will uh, screenshot it. And then at the very end, you send it to the FDA. And it has your name and address and all that. That doesn't go to the, to the people who you're rating. But apparently the FDA is supposed to act on it and go and look into it. So this is one way of getting these claims off of the internet. So if they're making a medical claim, you can send this directly to the FDA with, with, with the appropriate thing. And I've done three or four of these, and they're not really hard to do. Once you put your name and your address in there and save all the information, then Fish Barrel remembers it, and then the next time you do it, it goes really quickly. So um, I would definitely recommend trying Fish Barrel out. And I'm gonna pause for a second. This is now where we're going to talk about my main project, which is Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia. So, um, does anybody have any questions about skeptic action at the moment? Because that's because the Wikipedia stuff is where I'm just going to really get the main thing. Yes? How do you know? I mean, what's to ensure that someone who signs up for one of these skeptics or reads out or whatever visit that case themselves? Okay, her point, her good point, her question is, how do I know that somebody who joins Skeptic Action isn't a nut case and is going to go and try to counter us? Yeah, yeah counter it, I can't. Um, probably they're not going to do it because they've only heard about it from a skeptical, you know, like a, a podcast or a group like this. Is there a lone nut case in here? Do we have our <laughs> Okay, in the back. <laughs> so... Yeah, so we get them, um, and uh, this just has a higher group here. But yeah, and you know what? They're they're counteracting us because, like the Brzezinski pages, there's a ton of positive stuff on there, so they're countering us. What we think is that more we're more technologically grouped and, and um, we, we're just more organized. We know how to handle these tools better. But yeah, of course, I'm sure there's people going in there and rating them that are. Uh, not necessarily joining me, but going in and, and doing it. I mean, they're friends and family, I'm sure, rating them heavily. But I, you know, I've been editing Wikipedia for a few years now, and, and I'm finding that most people who try to do these technical things, it just, they, it fades. They don't quite get it. They don't follow the rules. Their attention span isn't so long, and they just might go in and try to do it, and then Unless you're Mavis, what's that guy's name? Mavis. Yeah, now he knows what he's doing. He's on it. He's the troll that she's she's looking confused. You haven't had a Mavis attack yet? Oh my goodness. Well, anyway, no. You haven't had a Mavis attack? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You had a question? So I'm new to everything you're talking about. Here. Okay. I'm wondering, you sit down at your computer and you're trying to find one of these sites that's unreliable. How do you start? What are you based on? Great. What you would do is you are you on Twitter, Facebook, or, or Google Plus? Okay, so you would join the Skeptic Action Facebook team, and, and Greater I will let you in. And every day, 
you will receive a post that says read, rate, comment, use Rebutter, use Web of Trust, and then has a link. And then I'll give you a, I'll give you a yellow, green, or red. What that means is that the site has a green rating, a red rating, or a yellow rating. Just for reference, because we're going to look back and see if we change that rating. And you'll click on the URL. Well, you have to have Web of Trust in your computer, your plugin. So you plug that, get that as a plugin. And then you'll go in and you'll click on the link, the URL, and you'll just open it up and somebody will probably have already been there before you, so it's probably got some kind of rating. And then you will just read the site as much of it as you feel like reading it. Some of them are so obvious. I mean, so obvious how you're going to read. And then you just go up and you, you'll follow the directions. I have a video on how to do this, so you have to do that first. And you just go in there and you just rate it. You just say, oh, no, this is not trustworthy. Uh, this is a psychic that is, you know, no, uh-uh. And, uh, you know, no, no. And you just rate it. There's a little graph that says red or green. So you just pick the side of the graph that you want, at red or green, and then you're done. And then if you want to leave a comment, you leave a comment. And, you, and there's also this uh, thumbs up and thumbs down for other people's comments. You can rate those higher or lower. And um, the only other thing I think you should remember is that I also put out positive sites. Our skeptical sites also go out. They're not, they're not as many of ours as there are the paranormal sites. But I will put out sites that, that I'm hoping you're going to vote green. I almost never tell you how to vote. This is entirely your own personal, personal thing. And sometimes I throw out things like um, um, go to, um, at your next skeptic meetup, buy a drink for, your, for the organizer of your drink. Uh, the, uh, the organizer of the next skeptic meetup because they don't say we don't tell these people we thank them enough, or go on Amazon and rate the last science book that you've read, or go rate a podcast, and on iTunes. So sometimes that will be my thing I'm telling you to do, and uh, sometimes it's just to go to so and so site like the National Science Foundation or NSF or you know go to the site and rate them because we also want to make sure that those sites have a green rating and that's strong because they can get attacked by the paranormal groups and things that are anti. Can I one more question? Sure. Well, two more questions. How do you get your videos? Um, you go to Twitter, or Facebook, or, and, and it'll take you to a link and there's the video. Okay. And if I go to the National Science Foundation, I'm not going to have the expertise to know whether it's right or not, what they're saying is true or not. Well, you can just kind of go through it. And, and give yourself a good browsing. And you don't have to give it a positive all the way to the green. You can give them you know, a green and you can go to the you know, you can you look through it, and if you're not comfortable with the site, just pass. There's going to be another one you can do tomorrow. Every day you get one. In fact, you can go through if you if you start doing them, and you're like, oh, it's like, oh, I want to do another one. You just go back in the past feed, and you'll see there's I've been doing this since May every day. So you can go, oh, there's a good one. Oh, I'm gonna do that one. I'm gonna do that one. I'm gonna do that one. That was my you got them all. Okay. Any more questions on skeptic action? No. So what would you suggest for those to suggest a site to be? Oh, if you'd like to suggest a site to be rated, um, send me, um, if you're on Facebook, send me, um, just put a notation. I'd like you to private message me. If you're, on face, if you're on Facebook already, I'd like you to private message me with it because I like to pull it off and not tell anybody what the next one's going to be. It's a surprise. So people suggest them to me all the time, and I need them because i got to come up with these every day, and I'm really busy. So I put out a key to, I try to do like a month's worth, and I, I'm constantly like, oh my gosh, give me another topic. I'll yell at my son in the other room, give me another pseudoscience topic, and he'll say, Kim Drills. And I'm like, okay, Kim Drills. What am I going to do with Kim Drills? So just suggest them to me, and I'll, it'll get on the feed. Huh? Yeah, no, no, Dr. Oz. And Nicole is, yeah, I think we've done him maybe twice. Nicole? That's perfect. Yeah, I think we've done them a couple times. Natural News is another one. Has tons of high ratings. So it takes a lot of work for us to get those down. But Dr. Oz, you betcha. He's on, oh yeah. He, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know he's Turkish until I saw that video that you did. I was like, oh my goodness. This guy's Turkish? we got to take care of him in Turkish. I hope he has a Wikipedia page that is so strong that we could take care of that's in Turkish. We've got to make sure it is because, you know, Questions about skeptic action? Oh, come on, you guys. He's got to be more. All right, Jay. Does do not link play nicely with the other two words? In other words, if it's giving me a different URL, uh, will it tell me whether it's the original URL is trustworthy or whether the do not link link is 
use trust. Oh, okay. He's asking about do not link. If it's tr yes. If you go to the do not link, um, it's just going to take you to the website, and everything else is just as if you were on that website. In fact, when you take the do not link, this gives you a whole bunch of squiggly lines and a whole bunch of random stuff, so you can't see. When you see the do not link, you can't see what it says. Uh, I mean, by reading it, and you go and you paste it into your address bar, what you're going to see is the address bar of that page. So it like changes it back when it goes over. So yeah, it were, it plays nice with other people. So far, yes, dear. Which one? Butter. Or butter? Okay. that for the, for the, for the uses the structural video. So she said that she uses a lot of rebutter in her research and that uh, with rebutter she has some concerns that when you use a, a Wikipedia page to rebut uh, something that it's possible that the Wikipedia page has been altered and, and they, whoever's looking at that is probably not getting the best Wikipedia page or the best science out of that. Is that kind of fair? So. Um, to answer you, yes. To um, but in some cases, the strongest Wikipedia pages like Scientology, Mormonism, Homeopathy, the Natural Sciences, Evolution, um, astrono Astrology, Astrology, and then a lot of pages that I know that my team has has worked on. Like right now, we're doing spontaneous human combustion. <laughs> There's a story behind that. If I have time, I'll explain. But it's going to be interesting. Um, whoosh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know it could happen like that. I'm fully very hot. Um, those pages are not changed in Wikipedia. If they're changed, it's changed so slightly and it's changed back right away. Those are very strong, well written pages. And to get something on homeopathy's Wikipedia page is like. Oh, you know, it's like a, a huge discussion between everybody and the back pages. So some pages you can put up with confidence, they're not going to change. And if they change, it's going to be like somebody vandalized them and then like two seconds later it's unvandalized again. So I, I'm okay with that. There's probably some Wikipedia pages out there that are probably not, are probably like you say that we have to worry about. But for the most, let me know which ones those are. But for the most part, if you're going to link to a, um, a homeopath, uh, somebody's doing homeopathy on the internet and selling their wares, you can you can surely take the homeopathy page and link it right back to there. I guarantee that will be fine. What I've been doing actually is when I'm seeing because this is fine for now, but five years from now someone else might get hurt. So well, I'm more inclined to you know look at both. Well that you're right, but we gotta keep but I, my team's gonna be around forever. So what I'm thinking is if there's a Wikipedia page, I'm saying another link that comes out Please, yeah. Very good. Add as many rebutters as you possibly can. The homeopathy, we like using the whole, uh, Wikipedia pages too because people are more likely to go to the Wikipedia page and reading it because they know there's no pop-ups, there's no viruses, there's no scams. They know there's, they're comfortable already using Wikipedia for, for things. So we think that the, the, the Wikipedia is a link that they're more likely to click on than somebody's blog necessarily because it's more opinion and they're more likely to do it. But yes, please add as many rebuttals as you can. If you see a Wikipedia link, yeah. 
to add some more to. But it's just Wikipedia is kind of one of those things. If it's a, if it's a creationist site, well, then take the evolution site from Wikipedia and you're up there and it's gone. And you know, you, you, you know you're introducing them to something else. Okay, so you guys, oh, another question? For my strange person? Okay, do we read sites that are political with creationism and that kind of thing? We've really not been doing a lot of anything that's religious unless it's, um, we've had a, we did the exorcist guy who does all the exorcisms and I haven't been doing anything that's political. We tried not to get into social issues. We've been mainly concentrating on just a diverse group of uh, pseudoscience kinds of things, Bigfoots, the chemtrails, the anti-vax, homeopathy, Brzezinski. Um, I don't know, I'd have to look at the page to see if I wanted to do it. It's not like we're running out of content of all the others. Astrology, numerology, uh, phrenology, uh, you know. So I don't think I'm gonna do politics if I can. Creationism, yes. I'm thinking of slides that are basically Right. Climate change, yeah. I have to see it and decide because, I, like I said, I'm not really running out of anything, and um, I've been having a lot of fun mixing it up for people. And you can easily go off to my recommendations once you know what you're doing and spend the day. You know, if you've got your pet peeve thing over there, go for it. You can really have a blast. I'm using her better and stuff like that. You can go page after page after page. If you find a homeopathy page and you've got like three of your favorite articles, like maybe one's on homeopathy on Wikipedia, maybe somebody's blog in homeopathy, and maybe another place that really describes homeopathy, you can take those three and just go hit every Wikipedia, I mean, every pseudoscience, uh, um, uh, web of Trust page on homeopathy and just, you could be there for hours and just go for it. We'd love to see something like that. It's, it's a lot of fun. They've also got another link up on, on Rebutter that I haven't talked about is that uh, Shane just put up that if somebody has been sending out the URL to something, like we did the Church of Scientology, and somebody had just tweeted the Church of Scientology's website on Twitter, that link, I got a little note saying that why don't you send it to this person and let them know that, that that the link that they just sent out on Twitter has been rebutted. So I did, and I got uh, Kirstie Alley. So I was I was tweeting to her and her fans there for a little bit. That's interesting. Okay, so we're done with skeptic action. You guys think you got it? Enough that you think you just go to Facebook, Twitter, uh, my feed on Facebook, or um, Google Plus, and you will find an instructional um, videos and uh, it's not very long instruction book on how to how to how to do this. Okay, so I'm gonna change hats because it's time. Hot change now. So this one I'm gonna go to. See if anybody recognizes this because this is the grill of skepticism. <laughs> so I've got my Che Rivera hat on. It's the first time I've worn it in public. Thank nice. you. I look great as a brunette, don't I? So, um, <laughs> so, Che would say, this is how you do grill with skepticism. Okay, now I have been doing this a little over two years. I absolutely did not know what I was doing at all. And I made this up. Tim Farley started me on this project just by saying, people should go and edit Wikipedia, it's real important. And I said, okay. It took me a while to figure it out. And then people started joining me. We've been doing it a little over two years. I've got about 100 editors in about 17 languages. So I'm going to kind of do this, uh, not too much detail because I really want to get into the questions. So I picked the Brzezinski Clinic um, just to keep with the theme of the topic of today. And uh, I'm not going to let you read this, and I'm not going to read this out. You can go to Wikipedia and you can read the darn thing. This is another well-guarded page, just like all the others that I mentioned. And um, we have to have some good stuff in there because we know that people are reading these pages. We know how many people are reading these pages, but we don't know how much of it they're reading. They could be there for seconds. They could be there for, you know, 
hours reading the entire text. They could just be reading the lead, the par first paragraph. So we need to make sure that this is really well written, the first paragraph. Remember I said the first line or so, you really want it to be really well done because that one is the one that's gonna go on that Google thing. So in the Brzezinski Clinic page, we have in the lead, offering unproven cancer treatment. The clinic has been the focus of much criticism due to the way it's unproven anti uh, I could do this better. Anti-neoplastin anti therapy is promoted. The cost for cancer sufferers participating in trials of anti-neoplastin, significant problems for the way these trials are run, legal cases brought on as a result of the sale of the therapy without board approval, and for other causes. There's a scientific consistence, consistence that anti-neoplastin therapy is unproven and of little promise in treating cancer. A Mayo Clinic study found no benefit from anti-neoplastin treatment. And the bottom line, there's no clear evidence to support the anti-cancer effects of anti-neoplastins in humans. That is all in that lead. So if that's all the person reads, then we've done the best we can. Now, just like with Chris's friend, who, her cousin, who went into the multi-level marketing even after she, that person was a woman, she, she was warned not to go. She still did it anyway. This is what's happening with the Krasinski thing. People are still going in, even though we, you know, we're, they're getting a warning. The web of trust is definitely negative. They're um, getting rebutters. Possibly, you know, <coughs> fish barrel, which is just started. Maybe that would be another thing we need to do. And then, if they're going to the Wikipedia page, they're getting as much information as possible. We can't save the world completely. You know, we can only do what we can do. I don't like us attacking parents. Their children are dying of cancer. Uh, or their family member, they're desperate, they have nothing they can do. I mean, you really feel bad for these people. I don't want to attack any of those people, but we got to do what we can, and this is what we can, and, and so on. So my next question to you is about how many people go to this Wikipedia page a year? How many people are interested in Brzezinski's stuff? How many people do you think are going? 100,000. 15 million. This is just English. Okay, so pick a number in your head, and it's 186,000 went this last year from September to September. Now we know that's not how many clients he has, and I'm sure our skeptical community has really been pushing this, so I'm sure a lot of it's you guys. But we know that when people go to this Wikipedia page, this isn't all the skeptics going here. People are going here to get information, and we're hoping that when they go to get the information, they're leaving going, uh, let's try something a little more conventional because this sounds really scary. This sounds like it's not working. This sounds like, you know, uh, no. And this is a chart, a, a Wikipedia stat chart. We use it for a lot of things. And you guys can get this. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. It's just a chart. And you can see the Brzezinski Clinic. You can see up here it says um, 8,555 times was visited. This um, this uh, to, um, September, and if you mouse over these things, you can see the date. Well, this is a slide, so it's not going to work. But you can see how many people actually went to these pages. So it's really, really important that we have this. And it says down here in English, we're trying to get all these Wikipedia pages written in all languages because uh, we know he's a, he's um, from Poland. So we really need to make sure the Wikipedia page is written in Polish for all that, but I don't have a Polish team. And um, he's also been going to Italy. Uh, remember Fabio? 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 I can't believe it's not better, Fabio. His sister was going to this clinic, and she's dead. And so um, we, we need to make sure that, um, you know, it's, it's in all languages. So that's one of our priorities. OK, also we have an alternate cancer treatment. Um, page that just came out of Wikipedia and Brzezinski's mentioned there. And I just want to just, I'm almost done. I just want to briefly talk about some of the other Wikipedia pages we've done. Leo Igwe, anybody know who Leo Igwe is? There you go. He's becoming more and more famous. Not only Leo, but there's a lot of people that are not recognized for their work that they do in other countries. And these are nasty things. I mean, I think Leo's father was beaten up and Leo's almost been beaten up in um, Africa trying to combat the witches and, and the things like that. So we decided we're gonna start working on his Wikipedia pages. So we've got Leo Ligue's page written in English. 
And this is German, thank you. And this one is Dutch. I should have this written down. This one is Russian. And this one, oh, and this is Jerry Andrus, who we started with. And Jerry Andrus is the first one. I wrote really his page myself. And then Jerry Andrus is now in probably six languages. Um, so we have a whole team of people who just translate. And that's that. So I'm going to change my hats again. Hat change. Hat change. And I'm going to put up a different camera if you want to stretch for a moment. And I'm going to put my camera over here because this is the question and art answer part that I hope you guys have some good questions about Wikipedia. If you have a skeptic action when you want to put in, that's fine too. But I really want to get some questions. So these are the things I'll be able to use for my my team to um, on our forum so that when we're training, we can point them to one of these videos and say, here you go. Here's the answer to your question. Because we're trying to get the, we're trying not to just answer the question straight out. We're trying to ask, get them to get comfortable to go to the health stock, health documents. We've got all sorts of great health documents. So I don't see anybody stretching. Okay. Either that or maybe you fell asleep. Huh? Oh yeah, <laughs> seven hour, seven minute stretch. I'll bring this over here, Brian. So this goes for 12 minutes, and then it turns on. And then you turn it back on and it goes 10 minutes. So if I go like this, I'm going to tell you, so if I say stop it, then just hit this button again. Okay. So like after each question, I'll probably just do that so that I have some nice, clear video. Okay, hat changed. Hat changed. Hat changed. So for my first question, I'm going to put my, this is a um, Yeti hat. <laughs> so I'm, you know, kind of scared of what I'm going to get here. So is it is it on? The little button right here. You press this button right there, and then it goes like a red light. For my first button, I'm at, okay, is it on? I'm at the Bay Area Skeptics Meetup. Yeah. Berkeley, California. Yeah. Two hundred people. <laughs> 200 fingers, maybe, here. Okay, Sheldon's got the first question. Sometimes when I visit a Wikipedia page, there's a lock. What is that about? How do I get rid of it so I can edit? A lock? Yeah, there's a little picture of a lock, and it says this page is locked, so I can't do anything. Can you name a page? No. No, that's pretty frequently. I don't have a Wikipedia account. Okay, that's probably what it is. Some pages get locked. We we ask to have them locked. If there is a, I don't, I didn't know that there was a lock that showed up. Yeah. Well, first thing you should just get a Wikipedia account and start editing, and that will pretty much unlock the pages to you. What they're trying to do is um, some pages like a a recent death or a recent controversy. Um, they don't want just anybody to be able to go in there and, and edit it. They wanted to, the thing that was going on with Michael Shermer the, and PZ Myers recently, we had that locked because people were going into Michael Shermer's page and just, you know, and PZ Myers page, it was just really ugly, like they have nothing better to do. And um, so we're constantly having to go back and take and tell people to, um, so we could, we could uh, unlock it. Uh, I mean, um, so we were constantly revisiting it and we we're trying to, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, uh, undo the page. People were putting some pretty bad stuff up there. So we have a lock. So if we have somebody who's constantly vandalizing, we get these trolls that get on the page and they just won't shut up. For, and then I guess their medication checks on, kicks in and then they go away. But so we try to be nice, but it's true. They kind of come and go. So if you've hit a locked page, that's probably what it is. It's somebody. It's a controversial topic. Um, it's being vandalized, or somebody's recently died. Does that fit anything that you've? Probably, yeah. Okay. Some big ones, you know, Mormons and stuff. Mormon, yeah. yeah. And some of those pages, like homeopathy, Mormonism, Scientology, and so on, those are also protected. We call it semi protection. If you have an account on Wikipedia, they'll allow you to edit. Um, but if you, and I think you have, there's another condition besides that. I think you have to have edited so many times or something before they'll let you go in. And it's just, we're trying to get the trolls off. It's, we're just dying on our trolls. So, um, uh, I should have set the timer here so I know when you told me this. Okay, let me turn the down. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, I can't read it. 
Okay, so next question. Yes, sir? So I'm confused about like the video you made. Oh, okay. So, what's the question? His question is, what's the difference between a Wikipedia page, general Wikipedia page, and a Gorilla Skepticism Wikipedia page? There's no difference. It's the same Wikipedia. Uh, it's just that our team has created it, and you'll know that if our team created it, it's it's damn good. We put tons of citations. We are very. We like to use lots of photographs. I personally, as an editor, like to use a lot of quotations to give it more humanity and more um, that kind of thing. We also seek out criticism because we know that if we don't put criticism in that Wikipedia page, when it gets live, they're going to put criticism in it. We'd rather have some kind of, kind of control. We don't want it to look good. So um, we, and we also have it on our watch list, which means that if uh, when we sign on to Wikipedia, um, and we click our watch list, we know if that page has been changed and we can go over there and we go quickly uh, check it. So a gorilla skepticism on Wikipedia is just our team. We, we, everything we do is Wikipedia follows the rules, everything's the same. It's just we are behind the scenes discussing how to edit these pages on a forum and we have experts and we have people that just go over it and over it and over it and nobody's more critical than we are. So like right now we're writing a page for uh, Hemet Mata, Meta, the friendly atheist, and we're also doing Chris French, and we have uh, um, Dr. Rachi, the, the, the from Skeptic Sound. Those are all three pages off the top of my head that we're really, really working on right now. How do you decide who to write a page on? How do we decide who we write a page on? I don't choose. They, my editors choose who they want to write a page on, and um, or a theme or a place or person, um, they pick what they want to do. I do have a spreadsheet with tons of stuff on it. Oh, tons and tons of stuff. We're always adding things. So lots of people pick them off there. But when you're in training, we'll assign you something. But um, for the most part, after you finish your training, you can do whatever you want. But I do have suggestions, like I really want the Brzezinski page done in all languages. We're trying to get all of um, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and uh, Lawrence Krauss's page is done in all languages because they're about to hit the news. With Cosmos coming out in 2014, there's going to be a huge amount of uh, visitors going to um, Neil deGrasse Tyson's page. He has 130,000 views a month right now. So when Cosmos comes out, well, I can't even imagine how many he's going to get in zillions of hits. 20, 20 times that. Yeah, probably. But then again, Jenny McCarthy, she's getting over 100,000 views a month too. Um, same with uh, Jenny McCarthy. So, and we're on those pages too. Bill Maher, we're also on those pages too with the little blogs about their anti-vax, anti-medical science. But, um, did I answer your question? That, yeah, okay, yeah. So we, I don't pick, they pick who they feel passionate about. Chris, um, she decided her page she wanted to work on was Mary Roach because she met her at a conference and she was very nice to her. And she says, her page is in really awful shape. Can I do Mary Roach? I'm like, go for it. Yes, Leonard? So have you done, say, a Jenny McCarthy page? Have I done a Jenny McCarthy page? It's done. Her page is in really good shape. Um, all I did is at the very end of the Jenny McCarthy's page, under medical uh, views or it's under autism or something like there's a section down there at the bottom. I have inserted um, about a paragraph worth of stuff. And it on there it talks about David Gorski's and um, Olette is another person who's in our community, I think this is him. And Martin Garner. Oh no, I'm, I'm getting confused with Bill Maher. Both of them I've done the same thing to. I've taken and put um, some quotes from our more prominent skeptics who have sites, citations, and I've pasted them into her um, article. She, so, yes, we have. I have been on her page, but whether people are going to get down that far to read it or not is a, is another thing. But her lead does have some sort of negative something in the lead too. So you, you've you've gone into the page and um, made sure that any anything that talks about.